Many of us grew up with movies and TV shows like Home Alone, Matilda, That's So Raven, and The Cosby Show. And if you're too young to know about those movies and TV shows, bruh, that was like the best time of my life. It is never too late to check them out. Highly recommend. It's so crazy to think that it's been decades since these child stars captured our hearts, which makes me feel very old, not gonna lie. I'm counting down the top 10 child stars. You won't believe what they look like now. Might not be grammatically correct, but you get it. <laughs> What's gravy? You're watching Inform Overload. I'm Charlotte Del Rey. Before I get into this video, I wanted to let you guys know that our company is starting a new top 10 channel. It's called Top 10 Central. It's gonna be a comedy collab top 10 channel that's gonna be kinda of like Most Amazing Top 10 before they got into like the scary rut. Subscribe if you haven't already. So before I get into this one, I wanna know, how old are you guys? It's crazy to see how many people of all ages watch this channel and I'm glad our content speaks to all of you. So why don't you tell me your age down in the comments. You will not know my age because it's a secret. All right, starting off our list at number 10, Peter Ostrom. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is one of those just prime classic films. Don't at me, okay, it is. Not just because of Gene Wilder, bless his heart and rest in peace, but because of the remarkable child actor, Peter Ostrom as Charlie Bucket. Peter Ostrom was performing in plays at the Cleveland Playhouse Children's Theater when he was discovered by talent scouts searching for someone to play Charlie. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was an instant classic, and Ostrom was actually offered a three-film contract after the filming was finished, but Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was his only film appearance. The movie came out in 1971, so it's been over 50 years, and uh, yeah, he's changed a lot. They, of course, tried to remake the film with Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka, and we all know how that turned out. Oh my Christ, that was terrible. <laughs> Peter Ostrom is now a licensed veterinarian with a practice in Lowville, New York. In at nine on our list, Mara Wilson. Mara was in a handful of movies as a kid. Mrs. Doubtfire, who could forget that film? Robin Williams. And then of course, there was Matilda. But Mara abruptly quit acting after her role in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. She did a handful of voice acting for Bojack Horseman, but it's crazy to see how she's grown up. Mara is writing now. She wrote a book called Where Am I Now that released in 2016, and she's also got quite a bit of Twitter clout to boot. In at eight on our list, we got Raven Simone. Who else rushed home after school to watch That's So Raven? Me! Raven Simone started her acting career very young with her role on The Cosby Show. She first appeared on the Disney Channel in 2003 on That's So Raven. Then there was that Cheetah Girls franchise. Oh my god, I love the Cheetah Girls. Like, guilty pleasure, like low key. Most recently, she was a co host on ABC's The View and she's appeared on the hit TV show Nashville and Empire. Raven is now back on the Disney Channel in the sequel to That's So Raven, Raven's Home. I'm really digging that like that gray hair vibes though. Those are some nice, some nice vibes. In at seven on our list, Kesia Knight Pullman. Kesia is best known for her role as Rudy Huxtable on The Cosby Show. She played the role between the ages of five and 15. She was the youngest actress ever to be nominated for an Emmy back in 1986 for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. She's been acting since she was nine months old, appearing in commercials for Johnson & Johnson baby products. I feel when you're that young, you're not actually acting. You're just kind of like really good at like looking cute and like not looking at the camera. <laughs> She's had a handful of brushes with fame since then. She won Celebrity Fear Factor in 2002. She also won a celebrity version of The Weakest Link. Most recently, she's appeared on Celebrity Big Brother in 2018, but if you thought she was cute on The Cosby Show, well, uh, she's hot. She's hot. <laughs> in at six, Alison Stoner. Who could forget Sarah Baker in Cheaper by the Dozen? I thought her character was so cool, I started dressing like a tomboy after I watched that movie. She was also that wild and little chick in Missy Elliott's video for Work It. It's been 17 years since we saw Allison in that music video, and while she's anything but a tomboy now, she actually rocked out on stage with Missy Elliott in 2019 during her performance at the 2019 MTV Video Music Awards. Allison Stoner is also a YouTube star and singer. She released several songs over the years. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Halfway there now at number five, Angus T. Jones. Even nowadays, it is difficult to turn on cable television and not see Angus Jones, AKA Jake Harper on Two and a Half Men. He quit Two and a Half Men after the writers tried to make his character grow up with him. He wasn't up for portraying the young adult situations that would have been normal for a kid his age. So he quit for a bit came back for a cameo, and then decided his true calling was religion. He went to school and majored in Jewish studies. No current plans to ever return to acting unless the character is Bible based. He actually hated the idea that he was on Two and a Half Men, especially with a character like Charlie Sheen's. He now works at the World Harvest Outreach Church in Houston. Coming into the number four slot, we got Jonathan Lipnicki. Okay, Jonathan Lipnicki was honestly the reason why I love seeing little kids wear glasses. 
This kid was the cutest, oh my god. He's, he was famous for his roles on Jerry Maguire, Stuart Little, and The Little Vampire. Oh my god, his little face, his little friggin' face. <laughs> Why do they ever grow up? Can we just can we just keep them that young? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. As Lipnicki grew up, he was dealing with some mental health issues brought on by bullying, and he only managed to land a couple small roles on TV. But come 2012, and Lipnicki appeared in six episodes of Mother Lover and eight episodes on Interns of Field. He looks totally different without his glasses, but he's still got that same quirky smile. In at three, Abigail Breslin. Abigail's first role was in M. Night Shyamalan's 2002 hit, Sign. But she really stole the hearts of millions for her role as Olive Hoover in Little Miss Sunshine. The dorky, peculiar cutie with thick glasses who wanted to be a pageant girl. But nowadays, Abigail is anything but dorky, okay? She cute! Okay, I see you, I see you there. She's definitely still acting. Since Little Miss Sunshine, she's appeared in films alongside Julia Roberts, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Meryl Streep. Keep a lookout for Abigail, she's supposed to star opposite Matt Damon in an unnamed film that's set to be released in 2020. Coming in at number 2, Haley Joel Osment. When I think of a child star, I think of Haley. Especially Haley in Forrest Gump. His adorable little face, oh my god. Then the scene with Tom Hanks when they're both sitting and they... Oh my god, so cute. Haley has literally dozens of IMDb credits and he's done a ton of voice acting as well, both for film and video games. But honestly, when I saw him in the Kaminsky Method, I barely recognized him. Like I knew he looked familiar, but it took me a while to realize that it was Haley. And that is because he looks different nowadays. He's still got the same cute eyes and baby face though. At number one on our list, we got Macaulay Culkin. Okay, I lied. When I think of a child star, I definitely think of Macaulay Culkin. I mean, how could you not? Home Alone? Classic. Classic, bruh. Macaulay was literally my childhood. He is and was the most famous child star ever. Macaulay starred in a ton of movies when he was a kid. Richie Rich, My Girl, The Home Alone sequels, the list goes on. But after he appeared in Michael Jackson's music video for Black or White, he sort of disappeared off the face of the earth. He returned to acting in the early 2000s for a role in Saved, he did voice acting on Robot Chicken, and then he turned to music. He was in a band called The Pizza Underground. Great name. Well, there you have it. Which was the craziest transformation on this list in your opinion? Let me know down in the comments. For now, I'm gonna wrap up this video with some common features from my video, top 10 celebrities that were catfished. Heather Lowe said, I love watching Charlotte. She's so sassy, such potato. Sassiest potato around, boo. Mm. Reagan Rose said, I liked and subscribed and turn on the bell. I love your vids. You get a gold star and an invisible potato. Carly said, I love you so much, Charlotte. You are my new favorite person to stalk on Instagram. That is weird, and I'm okay with it. Brianna Gabrielle said, what's gravy? You look like one of those moms trying to be cool to their kids. I take that as a compliment, actually. Your girl is booking all the mom roles, and I ain't got no children. Mm, I got plants. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want more. Stick around for some bonus content, and I'll see you in a future I.O. video. I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. It's your from a nipple plan yet. It's your for minute plan yet. If you got a big elephant noise, let me search it. <laughs> so I saw Matilda when I was a kid and it was one of my favorite movies. I actually tried so hard to move objects with my mind after I saw it. Like I was just staring at it, like trying to make it move and it's not moving. Iconic. It's weird how they call practices practices. Like medical practices. Like I don't want you to practice on me, bruh. <laughs> Please don't. Please know what you're doing. <laughs> Oh my god, I thought that movie was gonna be so good. It was, he was, ugh, it was creepy. <laughs>